hello, my name is Dr. Kelly Bird, and I am a children's book author, as well as a speech language pathologist and the president and founder of a family literacy program called Love for Literacy. The mission of that program is to promote um, family literacy practices um, and literacy in Black children and in Black families. Um, and so part of the work um, of that organization is to put Black children's literature into the hands of children. And so that's something that is really important to me. Um, I am coming to you at this time due to um, an incredible invitation by the folks at Field House Museum. And I want to say thank you to them for giving me an opportunity to come and participate in their author program um, and share a little bit of my story with you. As I mentioned before, uh, I'm a children's book author and the book that I wrote is called like sunshine on an otherwise miserable day. I published this book, I self-published this book in March of 2019. And I worked with a really wonderful um, and very incredibly talented <laughs> illustrator on this book by the name of Patricia Vasquez de Velasco. And I'll come back to this book uh, in just a few moments. Um, I will tell you a story about, um, about that book. Uh, I hope that you all are familiar with or know very well, uh, Patricia McKissick, who is a children's book author, a black children's book author, um, that lived here, um, in St. Louis. She's written lots of books like Messy Bessie, Flossie the Fox, um, Porch Lies, Going Someplace Special, which is one of my absolute favorites. Um, I was inspired by her um, to actually write that story. And I'll tell you um, that when I first met Miss McKissick, I actually know her through my parents because my father and Miss McKissick actually took piano lessons together. And so the day that I decided that I wanted to reach out to her so that I could talk to her about being my mentor, um, talking to her about her experience as an author, um, the day that I called, it had been raining all day. And it had been raining all day the day before as well. And I got up enough courage to pick up the telephone um, and call her and she answered and she was the most um, delightful, humble, um, just wonderful person to talk to. She was very funny. Um, and before we got off of the telephone, um, and I, again, because it had been raining all day that day, she said to me that our conversation was just like sunshine on an otherwise miserable day. And so those words always stuck um, stuck in my mind. They always stuck right there at my heart. Um, and so the year that Miss McKissick passed away after I had found out that she passed away, I actually sat down to write that book. I wrote Like Sunshine on an Otherwise Miserable Day at the top of my, typed that at the top of my screen. And I just started to brainstorm um, the ideas that I had around, um, around that book. And so she very much inspired me to write this story. I also find, um, because family is something that is uh, very important to me, um, I often find inspiration in my own family to write. I often think about experiences that I had or trips that I took. I often think about my grandparents. Um, when I write stories or when I get ideas for stories. I have several that I'm kind of working on um, right now. I think about fun times that I had with friends. I also think about lessons that I learned um, as a child, um, 
lessons from my parents, lessons from my grandparents. I am also an educator, so I'm around children all of the time, and I am incredibly inspired by my students um, and listening to them, listening to how they process things in the world, um, listening to the things that they're inspired by, the things that they're passionate about, um, and just observing how they interact in this world. So those are all things that inspire me um, as a writer. And so getting back to um, the book, like I said, family is, is, very, um, is very important to me. So when I thought about the family that I wanted to write about, I chose my own family because they're familiar to me. And I thought, well, I think it would be fairly easy to create some characters around um, the people that I grew up with, the people that I know the best. So this character, Kainalu, is actually a younger version of myself. Kainalu is the main character in this book. And this is the mother in the book. And she's based off of a younger version of my mom. Then my father is in the book as well. This is based off a younger version of my dad. And then the two other characters are my brothers, my older brother and my younger brother. So here's a picture here of Bo. And here's a picture here of Baxter. Now these are their, their, their names as their, their characters in the book. And when writing this book, when I think about my, my process of writing, this book from beginning to end probably took me about a year, just, just over um, a year. The actual story did not take that long but um, creating the book from beginning to end took that long. I had to um, communicate with the illustrator um, what I wanted those characters to look like. And so I sent actual, actually several pictures of my family and she was able to help me to um, bring to life these characters based off of pictures of each person in my family pictures as um, they are as adults, but also pictures of them when they were younger. Um, and so I also had to communicate to the illustrator about what I wanted on each one of these pages. So I had to um, let her know all of the details of these pages, what colors I wanted to the um, outfits to be, what I wanted the outfits to look like, where things were placed in the book. Actually, all of the items in, um, like on this page, for example, my brother loved to play the drums when he was little. He actually had a table set that looked exactly like this. My older brother played baseball when he was younger and had trophies. He is also a very good artist. So all of these, the, the, the details of this book were fairly easy for me to come up with because again, I was drawing off of what I already know um, about my family. Um, I did find that as I started to get illustrations that sometimes I would have to add a little bit more to the story or I have to take the story out because the story often changes until you get um, a final product that you are very happy with. And I was very happy with this book, um, uh, very happy with this book at the very end. The illustrator, again, Patricia Vasquez de Velasco was wonderful to work with. Um, and sometimes I would think that she was reading my mind because she was able to pick up on so many things that um details that I wanted and pictures and things that I the way that I wanted this story to um, appear or um, to be viewed by the people that were uh, the people that were reading it. So um, the writing process for me on this book, like I said, just took over a year. 
Um, and for some, it may be shorter. For some, it may be longer, but that's how long um, it took me. And I, I just had to kind of be open for how things would change or how things would maybe just take time. And that's part of um, the process of being an author. Um, when I finished that book and I went back to some of the things that Miss McKissick um, shared with me, there were two things that were really important. One of those things that she shared with me was that if you are going to be a writer, that you should be writing every day. So I often try to write every day. Um, when I am writing stories, I like to focus on having um, Black characters because I think that that is um, a space that needs to be filled. I don't think that we have enough Black children's literature out there, so I'm very passionate about um, creating Black children's literature. I think that it's very important that kids are able to um, to see young Black characters in books and that we start to normalize the images that we see so that we know um, that they can be the the detective and the smart guy and the president and um, she can be the, the she can be the president or a doctor or the superhero and so these are images that I think are Im important uh, for us to normalize and see more often and so when I am writing and I, I, I try to write most days, that's, I always keep that in mind. And the second thing that um, I think about that Miss McKissick shared with me was that she said as an author that you should travel and that you should experience the world as much as you can and meet as many people as you can and listen to their stories, um, really keeping in mind that those stories are the things that bring us together um, and that those stories bring us together and that they don't divide us because there are a lot more things that we have in common um, than we have that are different. And so again, when I'm writing stories, I often think about how that story may impact someone or how someone may connect with my story. Again, all in an effort to think of the ways that we can bring everybody um, that we can bring everybody together. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing this time with you, um, sharing the things that inspire me, sharing a little bit about my relationship with Ms. McKissick, um, talking to you about my book and the characters in the book and my family. Um, I would definitely want to encourage young people to become agents of their own literacy experiences, um, reading the books that you enjoy, writing your own stories, sharing your own stories, being storytellers. Um, and again, just keeping in mind um, all of the ways that uh, we can come together in sharing our stories. I thank you very much again to the people at Fieldhouse Museum, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.